Hurricane Season 2020, Episode 6. Some key essentials you may need after the storm. Coming up next. Hurricane Season 2020, Episode 6. And today we're going to be talking about some stuff that you're probably going to need after the storm. Uh, a couple of these you may use during the storm if uh, um, bad situations do occur. Um, I have just, uh, on one of my videos, I mentioned safety goggles. Safety goggles are very important, especially if you're going to go outside in a hurricane and you have to take care of something. Um, you want to make sure that you have safety goggles on because there is a lot of stuff flying around out there and you do not know what it is. Um, second thing you want to have, uh, maybe for during and maybe even afterwards, uh, depending on what's going on, is a good raincoat. Um, spend the money and buy a decent raincoat. Um, you can get these cheap ones from places and everything else and they just don't, you know, hold up. You want to spend the money and buy yourself a decent raincoat. On top of a raincoat, um, you want to make sure that you have a good pair of boots. If you're going to be outside um, during the storm, after the storm, during the cleanup and everything else, you have no idea what is out there. Uh, somebody's roof could have blew off down the road and debris and nails and everything else ended up in your yard. Aren't you the lucky one? But, you know, if you have at least a good pair of shoes on, a good solid pair of boots, you know, gives you some protection. Don't go out there and flip-flops. Use your head. Speaking of head, you want to make sure that you have a good hat. Now, you want to try to get a good hat. Um, this one is waterproof, but it also has uh, the sunshade for your neck. Uh, because typically, usually after a hurricane does come through and the storm has moved on, uh, with the pressure and everything, uh, you know, settling back down and stuff, you usually have beautiful weather for quite a few days after a hurricane. So you want to have something to protect your, your face and your, your neck and everything else from the sun because you're going to be outside probably working in it, cleaning up the mess. All right. <clears throat> and the next thing is you want to have a mask. Now, before everybody comments and jumps down my throat about having masks. I bought these last year in June, okay? And I only have two pair. I don't have boxes of them. They're not for sale. But anyways, you wanna make sure that you have some type of a mask. If you don't have a mask, if you can't get a mask, um, you can always take and use a do-rag and wrap it around, take an old t-shirt, cut it up, um, because the dust and everything that you're going to be breathing, especially if you're dealing with roofing material and insulation and things of that sort, um, you want to make sure that you have your face covered up and you're not breathing it in. And um, you probably also want to make sure that you're wearing um, long sleeve and long pants just to ensure that everything is safe and give you a bearer protection against whatever it is you have to tackle out there in the wild. And it will be wild. <clears throat> you wanna make sure you get some contractor bags. Now these contractor bags, they come in all these different sizes, okay? Um, they also come in different thickness. Now these here that I got, uh, I got the last box that was on the shelf. Um, um, they're two mil. They're right down at the lowest end. I like between four and six mil. Yes, you do pay more for it, but if you have like a six mil and say during the hurricane, there's a wonderful little thing that came flying through your window and you needed to make sure that you fix that, um, a six mil would come in handy doing that with duct tape as I had talked about in one of the previous videos. Um, but you would have very many different uses that you could use for these big contractor bags besides just stuffing all the debris that you get to clean up from more than likely everybody else's yard. Um, you can also get these. They're big cardboard, um, brown paper bag 
uh, leaf bags. And you can get them. I get mine at Lowe's because it's right down the street. Uh, I see Walmart does sell them um, once hurricane season does roll around. Um, your main places like Home Depot, Lowe's, and probably your hardware stores have these on hand year-round. Um, they don't uh, break it down to seasons like, you know, a lot of places do. Uh, the next thing that you're probably going to make sure that you do have, let me get this out of my way, is a tarp. You may want to have a few tarps, a few different sizes. You don't know if you're going to need to repair something, set up a quick shelter outside to get out of the, the sun or weather in case your house got damaged beyond, you're not be able to live in it. Um, so tarps come in handy. You can get them from small ones to the size of an RV. So you can choose your lifestyle. Next thing is, <clears throat> a lot of people don't talk about after a hurricane, if you don't have hurricane shutters or, or plywood over your windows and stuff, more than likely your screens are going to be destroyed. If nothing else from the wind, but from the debris that is hitting them. So you go out and you buy yourself a roll of screen. Now you can buy it, make sure you buy it big enough to cover any of the screens that are in your homes. Do take your tape measure and measure. And then you want to also, you'll get um, spline. It's rubber seal that goes around the frame. Okay. And it usually comes in, you know, 20, 50, hundred feet, whatever. And then you have to get a spline roller. And these rollers, one end is grooved, has grooves in it, and the other one in is smooth, and it's just like a quarter. The only other thing you're gonna need to do this application would be a utility knife to trim off the excess screen at the end. Now when you do this, the way I've always done it, um, you start with the top, you make sure it's square, okay? It's gotta be square so your screen doesn't look crooked, all right? So you start off, it's square, then you do the bottom. Once you do the bottom, pick your side that you want to do. Do one side and then do the other. So whatever the other side is, um, you have to pull a little bit of tension, but you can't pull a lot of tension because you'll take and pull the frame of the screen and you will bend it in. It will bend very easy. There is nothing to them. So you just have to apply enough pressure so that you don't have any bumps and your screen isn't real saggy, okay? Um, Another quick tool, um, and I would suggest on the screening part, um, if you're gonna, if you want to try doing that, I mean, it does. It's not expensive to, to buy this stuff. If you want to try and doing a screen while it's good weather out, because if you need to get windows open and stuff, uh, you want to make sure you can get that done ASAP and know what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> I have this little tool right here. This is to shut off your main water out at the street. So you would go out and this part here is made to turn off your main water main to your house. So if something happened and something uh, got destroyed or broke and is leaking and you can't get it turned off, you can turn it off at the main right outside of your property. This part here is made to turn off your natural gas, um, <clears throat> which I have natural gas. So this part here, if you had a gas leak in your house for some reason or whatever, you can go right out to your meter and turn off your gas. You also have these key sockets here and they are made to turn on and off water from your outside faucets. Um, any different type of faucet that is made, this will turn it on and off even, you know, because some people, you know, they take the thing off and, you know, so you can't turn it on. You know, they don't want you using their water or whatever. If you have one of these that costs you five bucks, you can turn on any outside water spigot. Um, if you do have the luxury of having power, instead of using, you know, a big rake like this or a smaller one like this, this I use a lot to have a lot of uh, brush and uh, banana trees and you know all that kind of stuff and that is so easy to get in and around compared to fighting with the big one to get it into the small little spots. Um, if you have a leaf blower, a leaf blower, even if it's gas powered, which would be even better this way if you didn't have power, you would be golden, will save you so much time and energy and blisters on your hands than anything that you can think of. So think about it.
invest in an leaf blower, even a gas one or a power one. Maybe if you have a generator or something like that, that's coming up on a, a video coming soon to an area near you. So my name is Charles. Uh, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching my videos, for liking them, for hitting subscribe. And if you would hit that little bell, that way you're going to get notified every time that I do a video. And um, this is hurricane season 2020. And I will see you all on the flip side.